As the U.S. Marines phase out of the Harrier Series aircraft for the lighter and more agile F-35B, we only thought it fitting to send her off in style. In this ultimate guide, we take a deep dive into the advanced features of the AV-8B Harrier aircraft, uncovering the secrets that make this vertical, short takeoff and landing V-Stole Marvel truly stand out. From its unique ability to hover in mid-air to its sophisticated weapon systems, this aircraft is a force to be reckoned with in the world of military aviation. Join us as we explore the intricate details of the AV-8B Harrier, from its advanced avionics systems to its cutting-edge design. Learn how this iconic aircraft has shaped the modern battlefield and continues to push the boundaries of what is possible in aerial combat. How is this technology possible? What makes the AV-8B Harrier jet different from all the rest? Don't miss out on this exclusive look at the AV-8B Harrier aircraft and its advanced features. Subscribe now to stay updated on all things military technology and weapons and discover the true power of this formidable war machine. The imposing McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier. Today, we are going to uncover the secrets of the AV-8B Harrier aircraft's advanced features. The McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II is a highly advanced subsonic single-engine ground attack aircraft, now owned by Boeing. First off, let's talk about the aircraft's vertical, short takeoff, and landing capability. This aircraft is capable of vertical or short takeoff and landing, including on small airfields and amphibious assault ships. This makes it flexible and adjustable, and although it is highly versatile and can be used for a wide range of purposes, it is primarily used on light attacks or multi-role missions from close air support of ground troops to armed reconnaissance. Over time, this aircraft has been used in many countries, including the United States Marine Corps, the Spanish Navy, and the Italian Navy. The AV-8B Harrier II belongs to the Harrier family. It retains the basic layout of its predecessor, the Hawker Siddeley Harrier, constructed from metal and composite materials. Featuring horizontal stabilizers and shoulder-mounted wings with a noticeable anhedral downward slope, what sets it apart is its unique ability to perform vertical or short takeoff and landing V-Stole maneuvers. At the heart of the AV-8B is a single Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine. Yes, you heard that correctly. It uses a Rolls-Royce engine. This engine boasts two intakes and four synchronized vectorable nozzles positioned close to its turbine. Unlike most fixed-wing aircraft, which have rear-only engine nozzles, the Harrier II's arrangement allows it to achieve vertical takeoffs and landings. Additionally, smaller valve-controlled nozzles on the nose, tail, and wingtips provide precise control during low airspeeds. The AV-8B is a versatile combat aircraft, and it is fully equipped with a centerline fuselage and six-wing hardpoint, which carries a total capacity of 9,200 pounds, which is about 4,200 kilograms of weapons. This includes air-to-air, air-to-surface, and anti-ship missiles, as well as unguided and guided bombs, thus making this aircraft versatile for various mission types. It has two fuselage stations that are dedicated to a 25 mm GAU-12 cannon, so when it comes to air support missions, this is a formidable aircraft. Unlike its predecessor, the AV-8B has an internal fuel capacity of 7,500 pounds, which is about 3,400 kilograms. This increase in fuel capacity allows for extended missions and greater range. Also, the aircraft can carry additional fuel in hardpoint-compatible external drop tanks, which rounds up to a total maximum ferry range of 2,100 miles, 3,300 kilometers, and a combat radius of 300 miles, or 556 kilometers. This means that if the fuel capacity is not adequate for the mission, the AV-8B can receive additional fuel via aerial refueling using its probe and drogue system, which allows the aircraft to be refueled mid-air thereby increasing its range and endurance. This aircraft keeps the tandem landing gear layout from the first generation Harriers, but here's the twist. Each outrigger landing gear leg has been moved from wingtip to mid-span, 
to allow for a tighter turning radius when taxiing. The advanced technology and designs of the fighter. Now let's talk about the engine intakes. They're larger than the engines of the first generation Harrier, and they have a revised inlet, and there is a nifty lift improvement on the underside of the fuselage. These devices capture the reflected engine exhaust when the aircraft is close to the ground and provide an equivalent of up to 1,200 pounds or 550 kilograms of extra lift. The AV-8B Harrier is designed with next-generation technology that makes it a breeze to fly compared to the original Harrier. It's got a supercritical wing, hands-on throttle and stick, HOTUS control, and increased engineered lateral stability. These features significantly reduce the pilot's workload and make the aircraft very easy to maneuver. Ed Harper, the general manager for the McDonnell Douglas Harrier II development program, sums it up perfectly that the AV-8B looks a lot like the original Harrier, and it uses the same operating fundamentals, but just uses them a whole lot better. The cockpit of the Harrier II is a tech lover's dream. It features a large cathode ray tube multi-purpose display borrowed from the FA-18. And check this out, the pilots sit on UPC stencil 10 b 0 ejection seats. This means they can eject from a stationary aircraft at zero altitude, which is a great safety feature. McDonnell Douglas gave the Harrier a complete makeover, incorporating numerous structural and aerodynamic changes to the entire airframe. One of the key changes was raising the elevation of the cockpit by 10.5 inches, or 27 centimeters, and a redesign of the canopy. This was done to improve visibility and better accommodate the crew and avionics hardware. The front fuselage is also a marvel of engineering composed of a modern skin with an epoxy-based core sandwiched between two carbon fiber sheets. To balance out these changes, the rear fuselage was extended by 18 inches, or 46 centimeters. They even used the taller vertical stabilizer from the Sea Harrier. And for the tail assembly, they used composites to reduce weight, which is a smart design. The most significant redesign in the AV-8B is the wing. The goal here for this reconfiguration was to match the performance of the AV-16, which is now out of service while keeping the Pegasus engine of the AV-8A. To achieve this, the engineers of the AV-8B came up with a new one-piece supercritical wing. This design focused on improving the crew's performance by delaying the rise and drag and increasing the lift-to-drag ratio. Since the wings are made of composite, they are thicker and have a longer span than the AV-8A's wing. And in comparison to the efficiency of its predecessor, the AV-8B has a higher aspect ratio, reduced sweep, and an increased area from 200 square feet to 230 square feet. The wing of the AV-8B Harrier is designed with a high lift configuration, featuring flaps that automatically deploy during maneuvers and ailerons that droop. This design, coupled with leading edge root extensions, enables the wing to carry an additional payload of 6,700 pounds compared to the first generation Harriers, even after a short takeoff roll of just 1,000 feet. But the real highlight here is the wing's composition, made almost entirely of composite materials. It's a whole 330 pounds lighter than the smaller wing of the AV-8A, which is impressive. Similarly, the Harrier AV-8B-1 is a pioneer in the use of carbon fiber composite materials in combat aircraft. These materials are known to be lightweight and strong. What's impressive is that 26% of the aircraft's structure is made of these composites, and it gives the Harrier AV-8B-1 a significant advantage by reducing its weight by a substantial 480 pounds compared to an aircraft with a conventional metal structure. What operations has the AV-8B Harrier aircraft been involved in? This aircraft went through a rigorous operational evaluation. The AV-8B was evaluated on its ability to navigate, acquire targets, deliver weapons, and evade and survive enemy actions, all within the specified range and payload limits. The first phase of OPAVAL, which ran until February 1, 1985, required the AV-8B to fly both deep and close air support missions. Deep air support missions are unique as they don't require coordination with friendly ground forces. Let's discuss the role of the AV-8B Harrier aircraft during the Iraq War in 2003. The AV-8B didn't fly solo. It was teamed up with other close support aircraft. Their mission, battlefield interdiction and armed reconnaissance. During the war, the AV-8B became the US Marine Corps' lifeline. 
60 of the AV-8B Harriers were deployed, and they conducted over 1,000 sorties. In order to keep the aircraft fueled and armed, land-based forward arming and refueling points were used. The ground crew in charge of refueling and arming worked as fast as possible while the pilots prepped for their next sortie. After the war, the commanding officer of the USMC couldn't help but praise the AV-8B because it provided impressive, around-the-clock support for ground forces. The second phase of its operational evaluation took place at MCAS Yuma. During this phase, the AV-8B was required to perform fighter escort, combat air patrol, and deck-launched intercept missions. Now, no evaluation is complete without identifying areas for improvement, and some shortfalls in the AV-8B's design were highlighted, but these were subsequently rectified. Forging ahead to the Gulf War of 1990-1991, the AV-8B aircraft was heavily used in military operations and was stationed aboard the USS Nassau, where it initially conducted training exercises and helped with providing support to coalition forces. On the 17th of January 1991, the AV-8B began its first mission in response to air support from an OV-10 Bronco forward air controller. Following that, the AV-8Bs launched attacks on Iraqi positions in southern Kuwait, and throughout the military missions, the AV-8Bs carried out armed reconnaissance missions and collaborated with coalition forces to eliminate targets. What are the variants of this enigmatic aircraft? Back in March 1996, the United States General Accounting Office dropped a bombshell. They reported that buying a brand new Harrier 11 aircraft is more cost-effective and cheaper than manufacturing and building the AV-8B aircraft. Following this, the U.S. Navy estimated the cost of building each aircraft to be between $23 million and $30 million. But guess what? The cost for each brand new aircraft was pegged at $30 million, while it was estimated to be $24 million by the General Accounting Office. Despite the estimations and shocking revelations, they continued manufacturing, and it was not until 2003 that they stopped manufacturing the AV-8B aircraft. The AV-8B Harrier II, known to some as the Jump Jet, has quite a storied history. This is because the AV-8B Harrier II underwent impressive upgrades, from the Night Attack Harrier to the Harrier II Plus standards. These upgrades significantly enhanced the combat effectiveness of the aircraft, making them more formidable during military operations. The early days saw the Harrier II being used for trialing direct voice input. Yes, you heard that right. Pilots could issue commands to the aircraft using their voices. It was described as having a conversation with a fighter jet. How cool was that? Let's check out the avionics of the AV-8B Harrier II. The original Harrier II had its nose-mounted Hughes ANASB-19 angle rate bombing system. Whether it was precision strikes or reconnaissance missions, the AV-8B had it covered. In addition to this, the Harrier II was equipped with several ANALE-39 chaff flare dispensers, ensuring it could evade incoming threats. It also had an ANALR-67 radar warning receiver that kept pilots informed about potential dangers, while the ANALQ-126C jammer pod disrupted enemy radar systems, which made sure the pilots were one step ahead. Another variant of the AV-8B Harrier is the TAV-8B Harrier II, which is a two-seater trainer aircraft that can seat not one, but two pilots in tandem. Now here's where things get interesting. To counterbalance the slight loss of directional stability due to the extended fuselage, the vertical stabilizer's area was beefed up. Think of it as giving the Harrier II a bigger tail fin. After this, there was the USMC TAV-8Bs, a remodeled version of the TAV-8B. This variant inherited the AV-8B's digital cockpit and cutting-edge systems. However, there's a twist. These TAV-8Bs have only two hardpoints, which did not make it a combat-ready variant. The TAV-8Bs were solely built for training. The original TAV-8Bs were built with a 21,450-pound-foot F404RR406A engine. However, they were later upgraded to a more efficient 23,000-pound-per-foot F402RR408A, which provided more oomph for the trainers. The Harrier AV-8B-NA was the first major upgrade for the AV-8B, and here is what set it apart from other variants. 
So there you have it, folks. The AV-8B Harrier evolved with each upgrade and proved to be an efficient and versatile aircraft. It has been in service since 1985 and has served the Marines well. The last training class of mechanics for the Harrier just finished their training. The phase out of this fighter will take about two years. On the other hand, this is the end of an era for the Marine Corps. The Marines who graduated the last and final course spent two months learning about the Harrier's engine and its gas turbine starter, according to the news release. They will be assigned to Marine Aviation Logistics Squadron 14, the last unit that works on Harriers, located at Marine Corps Air Station, Cherry Point, North Carolina. After the Harrier makes its final flight, Marines who were assigned to maintain it will have the option to move on to another MOS of their choice. In 2020, the Marines shut down one of its most famous Harrier squadrons, and transition to the F-35B stealth fighter. The F-35 Lightning II, designed to operate from ship and shore, provides the Marine Corps with operational flexibility and unmatched lethality and tactical supremacy. Curious about the F-35? Stay tuned for our upcoming video of the state-of-the-art F-35 Lightning. Thanks for watching. Do you think the AV-8B Harrier has lived up to its name and capabilities? Share your thoughts in the comment section. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.